Hi, I'm Andrew. Today I would like to teach you how to use the graph to write an equation for the rational function. All right. Now, two important things we got to focus on are the intercepts and the asymptotes. Let's focus on the intercepts. So remember, there's two things, two types of intercepts, x-intercepts and y-intercepts. The x-intercepts are where the function crosses the x-axis. So it appears that there's only one location for that at x is equal to 2. So that's kind of your x-intercept, 2 comma 0, 2 comma 0. All right. We can assume that these go on and on and on forever. They're not going to cross at all because if they do, how the heck would you know where it is, right? Based on the graph. So we have to make that assumption. The next thing is going to be the y-intercept. Now you can have multiple x-intercepts, but there should only be one y-intercept if this is a function, okay? Because otherwise it wouldn't pass the vertical line test. So remember the y-intercept is just where it crosses that y-axis now. So the coordinates of that is going to be 0, 1, all right? The x value of all y-intercepts is 0. And the y value of all x intercepts is zero. I know it's kind of crazy, right? I know it gets confusing, but hopefully that makes sense. Next thing is going to be the asymptotes we've got to focus on. And this is where this is, these are values that the function approaches but never quite obtains. So that's the purpose of these dashed red lines here. All right. So it appears to me that there is an x, uh, inter, uh, excuse me, a vertical asymptote at x being equal to negative three. Right? According to my R, that should be about negative 3. And then the one over on the right-hand side should be x is equal to 4. Remember, all vertical lines have x equaling some number. I know that's confusing. It's like, it's a vertical line. Why isn't it y? Well, that's because the y value always changes, right? But there's one constant about the coordinate of all those coordinates along this line. The constant thing is the x. The x never changes. That's why that's the formula, all right? So we have vertical asymptotes. I should have also mentioned that there are two types of asymptotes, vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. The verticals here we have are going to be at negative 3, and then again here at 4. It turns out that this probably does approach a horizontal asymptote here in both cases, but whenever you have the horizontal asymptote being equal to 0, you can basically just ignore it. Okay, it'd be y equals 0. Just ignore it. It doesn't really help us. All right, uh, again, uh, gain any uh, insight into the function. Now, once you have all those pieces to the puzzle, now we got to put them together. So here, remember a rational, I don't know why I keep doing GH, a rational function is simply a function where you have some polynomial function in the numerator and some different polynomial function in the denominator. All right, so we got to treat each of these three pieces now, one, two, three, that we're going to treat them separately. Let's first focus on the vertical asymptotes. Now, the vertical asymptotes will tell you the, f the values of x that cause the function or cause this fraction to do something wacky, something undefined, meaning the function, when you plug in negative 3, doesn't work. Now, the only thing that can cause this function to not work is if the denominator is 0, okay? So these vertical asymptotes are going to give you insight into the values you're going to be plugging into the denominator, all right? And what I want to do is I want to try to find these values that will give a denominator of zero. So if x is three, the function is basically undefined. So what that means is if I create this expression, imagine I create x plus three. Okay, x plus three. So if I plug in negative three then for x, what does this whole term become? It becomes zero, right? And that's how I get my zero in the denominator. Then it's zero times whatever the heck this other uh, factor is going to be. But it doesn't matter because zero times anything is going to be zero. All right, so then you can do the same thing with the other vertical asymptote. It's basically going to be x minus 4. So the simple shortcut is going to be just take those um, horizontal asymptotes and do x, you know, plus 3 and then x minus 4. It's almost like you're finding factors from roots, right, if you think back to quadratics. So the next thing is then going to be to focus on the numerator. That's where the x-intercept helps us. Okay, remember, the x-intercept is saying when x is 2, the function has to be 0. Now, the only way you're going to get a 0 result overall is if what value is in the numerator? Right, 0. There's no other way to do it. So we're going to treat the x-intercept similarly to how we treated the vertical asymptotes, except it's in the numerator. So I need a 0 value in the numerator when x is 2. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do the same thing, x minus 2 because that will give me a zero result if x is 2, right? 2 minus 2 is going to be zero. Now, before we move on, there's one thing I want to mention about the asymptote, the vertical asymptote. So notice here on the vertical asymptote at x is equal to 4, they both approach negative infinity. Whereas on the vertical asymptote of negative 3, all right, one approaches negative infinity and the other approaches positive infinity. 
So whenever you have them approaching in opposite directions, like you have here, which is normally the case, you know you have an odd a power to your factor, or in other words, you have an odd degree polynomial there. But it, when they ap approach both directions together, where they both approach, let's say, negative infinity, all right, that's where you know you're going to have an even power for your factor, okay, or an even degree. So the thing is here at x is equal to 4, all right, since they're both approaching negative infinity, you got to do one thing with this factor, okay, the factor that produced or that was produced from the asymptote before, you just have to square it. You got to make it even because they both approach, all right, the same direction. They both approach negative infinity. It'd be the same thing as if it went to positive, both went to positive, all right? So just watch out for that, all right? In this case, whenever they approach opposite ways, you don't even have to worry about it. Just disregard it, okay? But that's one thing you want to do because now what we're going to do to factor in now our uh, y-intercept is we're going to have to place a coefficient in the front here to make this thing work out, all right? Because what I know for certain is that when the uh, y value is one, the x value is zero. So in other words, if I plug in one here and then zero for every x, okay, I need this thing to work out because it, it must. It, it says that that's what the graph, I mean, is telling me when x is zero, y is one. So I'm gonna write one is equal to some constant and everywhere I have my x now, I'm gonna plug in zero, okay? So divided by then zero plus three, and then zero minus four and squared. So then what we're gonna have, okay, is we're simply now going to have C and then you're gonna have negative two on the top. Okay, you're then going to have uh, three. Remember, this is gonna be three times now a positive 16, okay, on the bottom, right? And that's gonna be then, you can simplify that down to 48. Okay, 48. And then to solve for C, you'd have to multiply the right-hand side by that reciprocal, okay, which would be 48 over negative two. That just goes bye-bye. Whatever you do to the right, you gotta do to the left. So this is gonna be 48, 48 over negative two, right? And 48 over negative two times one, you know, you could just divide this by two, 48 basically divided by two. So this should be a negative 24. That's equal to your constant, all right? Now that is what we're gonna go back and plug in. We're gonna plug in now a negative 24, okay? And that's basically it. This is how I would leave it. I wouldn't really factor this anymore, uh, you know, I mean, or not factor, I mean, I wouldn't really combine this. I would kind of just leave it alone. I wouldn't uh, foil it, basically. So now what you can do is you can go and check, right? So plug in your function, negative 24, times then keep the numerator in those parentheses. Actually, I'm gonna do a, a double parentheses, a double parentheses, excuse me, because I realize I got some further complication down here with many parentheses in the denominator. So I'm gonna do x minus two, okay, x minus two, that's a three, x minus two, then divided by, open the parenthesis now. Actually, I don't need a double parenthesis up there. I'm gonna delete it, I need the double parenthesis down here. Okay, because I need to make sure, not cosine, I need to make sure that this whole denominator stays in the denominator. In other words, it's gonna be x plus three times then x minus four, x minus four, and then double close the parentheses. So I'm locking, oops, I forgot the square. So insert, insert the square, okay? So now, as you can see, like I'm taking this numerator and I'm dividing it by the whole denominator. If you don't, you know, if you don't plug in those parentheses, the calculator is gonna interpret it to be incorrect. So now just hit graph. And notice the graph looks perfect, right? You can see here that the uh, y-intercept is a one. You can see over here that the x-intercept is a two. You can see here that it's approaching negative infinity, all right, at that asymptote of x equals four. You also have an asymptote here at x equals negative three. And that's all there is to it, ladies and gentlemen, all right? So just keep that one thing in mind. Just be careful. Most of the problems will have the functions approaching in opposite directions, all right, like this. You don't have to do anything special. But whenever they approach the same direction, you just gotta remember to square um, that uh, basic, that factor, okay? That was produced from that asymptote. Thank you very much for tuning in. I really do hope this video helped. And if it did, if you can like, subscribe, maybe you can tell some of your classmates. We'd love to help more people and we'd love to help you more because we have thousands of videos, not only math here, but chemistry, physics as well. So if you're taking those other classes, keep us in mind, all right? Because we solve specific problems because guess what you're gonna see on your test? Specific problems, all right? We wanna teach you how to become a better problem solver. Thanks so much.
Take care.